Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. In this Excel tutorial, I will perform a time series decomposition using a filtering technique. So let's bring in Excel. I have a monthly time series with a seasonal component and a linear trend component. And I will use filtering to decompose the time series and estimate the parameters of the seasonal and trend components. First, I will filter the seasonal component out of the seasonal time series using a moving average with a window of 12. And I want to center it on month 7, so I'll take the average of the average of 1 through 12, which will be centered on 6.5, and, and average that with the average of 2 through 13, and that's centered on seven and a half. And so the average of those two will be centered on seven. Then I copy that down as far as we have data. I have year two, year three, year four, year five. I have five years worth of data and I'll stop right here because if I click on this you can see that D64 uh, this is the end of the data so I can't go any further than that. So now that I have a seasonal time series and a seasonally adjusted time series, which will be my trend, now let's look at this. Let's graph it and see what we have. So I highlight that. I go to Insert Recommended Graph, and let's use the line plot here. And now we can see we have our time series and we have our trend. And let me label this time series. If we want to see the actual regression equation, we can right click on the trend line and then come down here and click Add Trend Line. Over here we have Linear. And at the bottom down here we can click the box which says Display Equation on Chart. And we see we have the equation of the regression line right there. And so we can go inside the box and we can highlight this Control C to copy and then move this over. And then we can actually paste it up here and let's format it. So now we have our trend. Now, if we want to have the actual value so we can use it for forecasting, we need to calculate the intercept and the slope. And we do that with functions equals the intercept function where we have our known y's right here. Con shift control down arrow, comma, and then we want our known x's, which are going to be these x's right here, all the way up to where we start our data, right here. And so there's going to be our intercept. We do the same with our slope, our slope function, our known y's again, control shift down arrow, comma, our known x's, we start here and then we go up until we have the beginning of our data, which is right here. And then we return and there's our intercept and slope that we can use these to forecast the future. So that's our trend. Now let's estimate the parameters of our seasonal component. So let's add a column control plus and the seasonal index for each month will equal the seasonal value divided by the seasonally adjusted value and that'll be the index for that month. Let's copy that down as far as we have data. So these represent the seasonal index for each month for all those years. So let's estimate the seasonal index for each month by averaging the indexes for that month. So let's add some columns. And now beginning year two, control shift down arrow, and let's pull these up months one through twelve for year two. Beginning with year three, control shift down arrow. Let's pull these up beginning of year three. Control shift down arrow for the fourth year and bring this up. And then for the fifth year, control shift down arrow, we bring these up, but these are going to be only for the first half of the year. So now to estimate my seasonal indexes, we add another column. 
and now our seasonal indexes will simply be the average of all the common indexes for that month. And then we copy that down and there's our indexes. So now we've estimated the parameters of our trend component, the intercept and slope, and our seasonal component, the seasonal indexes. So now let's collect them. Let's bring our trend parameters over. So here we have So now let's use these to forecast the future. So let's take these estimates of our parameters, Control-C to copy, and let's come down here and use them down here where we'll be forecasting. Let's paste the actual values. Now, here is your 5, and we're going to start with your 6 and that's going to equal the next 12 months which will be go to 72 and so over here is where our forecasts are going to be so our forecast is going to equal our seasonal index times our trend which is our intercept and we'll F4 to fix that plus our slope F4 to freeze that times our time period or a month 61 in this case and so there's going to be our forecast return and I copy that down and there's our forecast for the next 12 months so now let's see what it looks like so let's bring in our graph and let's clean this up a bit And now we want to plot the forecast on this graph, so we go to Design, we go to Select Data, and in the Select Data we want to add our forecasts. And the series values will be our forecast, so we click here, Control Shift Down Arrow, Down Arrow, we say OK, OK, and then we go back, Control Home, go to the beginning, and now we can see we have our time series, we have our trend line, and we have our forecast for the future. Now, to summarize, what we've done is that we've taken our time series, we filtered out our seasonal component, and we use that to estimate the parameters of our trend component, to estimate the parameters of our seasonal component, use that to determine our forecast, and then plot it on a graph. So that ends the Excel tutorial video on time series decomposition filtering. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.